I don't know if it's other people or it's me, but I think we, I, I, at least personally, I reached peak, um, if you're gonna make a joke about how there hasn't been a stream from last year, oh my god, it's, uh, January 2nd, I haven't even, what, played a game yet this year, lol, I can't, ha 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 ha, shut the fuck up, okay? We're leaving that shit behind. Every streamer I follow on Twitter, haven't been live since last year, lol, lol, I haven't played Tarkov since last year, uh, on stream anyway. Shut the hell up. Holy cow, four fucking days. I'm not gonna stream for one year. Next day, first stream of the year. I haven't streamed in a year. Get over it. Jesus Christ. By the way, my New Year's resolution is to, is to continue my hater arc. I think we embraced it a little bit in 2022. I think it's time to take it to the next level. I think it's time to become a, a, a full hater. I think it's time to just to just get gross. Like check this out. So I got a I got a burp. I can't quite get it out. I got a burp, but I can't quite <clears throat> just I feel it. I feel the bubble. <clears throat> you don't like it? Get fucked. I, I do what I please now in 2023. I'm sick of self-censoring the gas that comes out of my throat. All right. Like most resolutions, that lasted about 30 seconds. People be like, my New Year's resolution 2023 is to improve my stream. And then January 3rd, their ass is playing Tarkov for 12 hours. Can you believe... Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> the, the hater arc is back. Sorry, sorry. That's not a knock on Mouth. I don't know if Mouth's resolution was to improve the quality of his stream. It was mostly just making up a person. Like, that's 2022, making up a person and getting mad at them. 2023, making up a person and dunking on them. And farming reacts in hashtag Twitch. Dude, couldn't be me. First off, it's it's worth noting for context. This is the first day that my daughter's daycare has been open since December 20... Hold on, I have to go back in the calendar. Since December 22nd, 2022. So we've been on... Um, extreme toddler duty you know for 17 days or something crazy um not my ass taking like the nine to six baby shift every day and then like at six being like kate i need you to look after her for a bit i just i'm i'm burned out then i just go sit on my computer and scroll for like eight minutes and i'm like john travolta in pulp fiction i'm like what the hell am i gonna do I don't, I don't know what to do. I have no hobbies anymore. My ass just sitting there, like, scrolling. Go to Twitch. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll watch some Twitch. Everybody's playing Tarkov. Maybe I'll watch some Netflix. Mid-episode. Mid Sorry, Netflix canceled this show mid-episode. It has now been removed to the uh, from the library forever. <clears throat> Netflix hemorrhaging money. Please, please. We're, we're losing so much money. Do you have any advice for us? Mm, stop spending $80 million on shows you cancel six weeks after they premiere. No, no. How about you just uh, pay us and uh, we won't make any content anymore. That would be the... What do you think you are, a streamer? Did you like $18.99? No, I'm not watching that shit because they canceled it. It was on my list of stuff to watch. And then Netflix was like, no, don't bother. They canceled the whole year. Uh, excuse me, uh, um, uh, 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 it, it, in the, um, millennials be like, um, first the year canceled you, and now you're canceling the year? You'd be a lot more calm if you did Sam Yo's New Year's recovery ride. Tom, I don't take 20 minute rides, okay? It's beneath me. Especially if, if the subtext of the ride, if you read between the lines, is take this ride if you're hungover. I'm not living that lifestyle. I don't need a calming, uh, meditative Sam Yo voice to tell me that everything's gonna be okay. I need Dennis Morton saying, turn it up, turn it up. Oh yeah, what? <laughs> Bubbly, act like you've been there before. I did the thing where on, on January 1st, um, 
I had nothing to do for a little bit. So I um, cleared out my fridge. I threw out all the stuff that had uh, gone bad. And then I had a bunch of space in my fridge. So I went out and I bought stuff and refilled it. Probably bought a bunch of shit that I will throw out next January 1st. Always find myself going through the fridge, like hating my previous self. Why the hell did I buy oyster sauce? I wanted to buy like one... I wanted to make oyster beef one time. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably use this whole bottle of, of oyster sauce for sure. Meanwhile, the shit I used like one sixteenth of the whole jar. It stays good for four years. It's been bad for two years. Like, make it make sense. And then every time my parents visit, they always stay in like uh, one of those hotels that has like a kitchenette in their room. So they buy a bunch of groceries, but then they don't use it. So I inherit like, I, I had like four 80% full containers of maple syrup in the fridge. And I'm like, well, it, you know, you don't want to throw it out because you're like, each one of these is probably like 18 bucks or something like that. But I also don't want to eat that much maple syrup because this shit is like crazy. You know, it's A, not good for you, and B, like, I gotta... I mean, people will be like, you could use... You don't have to use it for pancakes, you could just glaze a salmon. Yeah, I, I guess I could eat maple glazed salmon for, like, you know, 90 consecutive dinners to, to burn through my, my maple syrup collection. It's too much. I, I threw out three of them. I kept one more in there. I'll probably throw that one out next January is my guess. Yeah, it's food waste, but I didn't buy it. It's someone else's food waste. I know it's expensive. That's why I don't buy it. <laughs> it's because I don't want to. I don't want it. That's why I didn't buy it. There's places to donate. What the hell are you? Nobody's like, hey, donate your half-eaten sauces to the food bank. They're not. It's such such a, a pathogenic risk. You guys are crazy. Chance like I don't have any food waste. <laughs> I eat all of my DoorDash orders all the time. I have not stepped foot in a grocery store since January 2020. I think I have, I have a few resolutions. Okay, here's a resolution. Um, floss, that's a good one. No disrespect to other people. If you have like bigger resolutions, that's fine. I think New Year's resolutions get a bad rap. People that don't do anything are like, yeah, like you're gonna actually follow through with your resolutions. I do get a little skeptical sometimes when people are like, my, they write out like a huge doc for what their resolutions are going to be. And then like on January 3rd, they haven't even started aligning their behaviors with their new values. That to me is like, I mean, if you're not, if you don't have the motivation to start your resolution by January 3rd, then your ass is not going to make it. No disrespect. But if you, if you start it, the, the first, I get it. Because you, you might be hungover, it's the holidays, you got other stuff going on. But at least on the second. On the second, you got to start doing something. Why do you need a holiday to improve yourself? Hey, here's a question for you. Why do you care what other people do? I don't understand. People are like, oh, if I wanted to get fit, I would simply do it December 1st instead of January 1st. Okay, well, you're not doing it either way. At least this other person's trying. Don't be, don't be threatened by them just because they're trying to, you know, take matters into their own hands. Also, buy less sauces. Here's a, a, my new worldview for life. If I uh, have a new recipe and the recipe requires a sauce or seasoning I've never used before, do not buy it. Wait two weeks. If after two weeks you still want to buy it, then I'll get it. But never like an impulse purchase like, oh, ah, you, I should really get some cardamom. To I, I want to make this recipe. I've got everything but cardamom. Sure, I'm, I bet I can use six ounces of cardamom in the next two years. Not gonna happen. You're gonna cook cardam with, with cardamom like two times. You're gonna have 85% of it still in the, uh, in the container. And then people are gonna be condescending to you. They're gonna be like, oh, if I, if I had 75 cents worth of cardamom in my uh, pantry, I would structure my entire life around using it. I would simply, I would consume cardamom pie every day for the next 18 months. No, you wouldn't. Look at your own fridge right now. Favorite sauce? I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. My third resolution is not answering those kind of questions. <laughs> I don't know, it just came to me. <laughs> 
Sure, Frank's Red Hot? Yeah, why not? It's a boring hot sauce? I'm married with a child? Have a retirement fund? I don't need a hot sauce with an, a hydrogen sarbumba on the label that says, before you eat this, please consult your cardiologist. I'm just looking for something to, when I put the, the soft scrambled eggs on the toast, and then I put the red chili flakes on top of it, and then I, I'm just looking for a dash of something, not, not just a little spicy, but also like people are like, Frank's Red Hot is basically just hot vinegar. Good, I'm looking for some acidity, honestly. Mouth will take this personally. I can't wait for that dude to have to throw out 47 hot sauces. You know it's coming. It's not that I'm wishing it like ill on him. I'm merely saying that as a man who owns 50 hot sauces, there's simply no conceivable way unless he eats hot sauce with every single meal he eats every single day. There's no way he, he gets through them. Which is fine, you don't have- I mean, maybe this is another good resolution. When you buy, uh, sauce, don't think that you're gonna use the whole bottle. Let me tell you. My wife wants relish, like, one time a year, okay? First sunny day of the spring, she is like, uh, let's do some barbecuing. Let's have, uh, hot dogs or hamburgers. I need relish, okay? I always buy her the relish. We always need new relish, because I threw out the relish after it expired. Uh, I keep it in, in, in the fridge. I throw it out January 1st of next year. You know what I'm gonna do? New resolution. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save myself some work. I'm gonna buy the relish. I'm gonna squeeze it onto her hamburger or her hot dog, and then I'm just gonna throw the bottle straight in the garbage can. Cut out the middleman. I don't need to be having the relish in the fridge so long that it's paying rent. Just toss that shit straight in the trash. Just make your own? How about you make your own um, life perfect? And stop trying to make my life perfect. You what, you don't have food waste? Come on. I don't... I, take a picture of the inside of your fridge right now. I want to see it. I long, by the way, to have a fridge. Here's my ideal fridge, okay? Top shelf. Cold brew coffee. Couple of different flavors of, of seltzer. Fridge, the, the shelf directly underneath that. Ingredients to cook tonight's dinner. Directly below that, leftovers from last night to eat for lunch, nothing else. I want my fridge to look like a Marie Kondo apartment. I don't want the, the fridge that is like, we just got back from Costco, and the whole fridge is, we got half and half, we got 2%, we got oat milk, we got almond milk, we got uh, apple juice, we got orange juice, we got, I, I want, I want a minimalist fridge that has like seven total things in it. That's the dream. There are probably some other things you'd pick up as you need them. I think I should be like one sauce. I think I should be a one sauce. May you know, maybe two sauces. Maybe you could have gochujang and mustard. That's it. No mayo? I don't consume mayonnaise. Don't you have a kid? Yeah, well, that's true. I did forget to mention, like, probably 25% of my fridge space is taken up by, um, basically, like, pre-made fruit purees. 2023 resolution, STFU about, um, QP mayonnaise. Okay, I get it, it's better! It's better! Than the normal mayonnaise. I, I give you credit for that, but, like, the idea- I just- Listen, I- I'm just over it, okay? We're playing Dave the Diver here. I have to be careful with my swearing, okay? YouTube, uh, apropos of nothing at all on December 24th, changed their terms of service regarding monetization. If you say the S word, the F word, the D word, the A word, the Z word, etc., etc., within the first eight seconds of the video, you're toasted. Say goodbye to your advertisement revenue. You can light people up nine seconds in. If you could just have the self-control to not go off for, for eight seconds, at nine seconds, you can go straight into Dostoevsky Notes from Underground mode, okay? Um, I'm not saying any swear words, okay? We might still be in the first eight seconds here.
Do not call me when I'm on vacation. This is why r slash anti-work exists. Not me on vacation. My boss sends me a text. Hey, we need a large sushi boat. Uh, I'm not in the office today. Well, if you're not in the office today, then don't come back to the office again. Okay, be careful what you wish for. Not him texting me back uh, with a obviously fabricated screenshot. Uh, six hours later. Hey, I think we got off on the wrong foot earlier. Would it be possible for you to come in? Anyway. It's okay, we can we can skip the credits. I didn't think it would flashbang me. I apologize for that. Try moving to the arrow with Wazad. Not much, brother Wazad, with you. I am diving. Let's now practice using the weapon you'll need in contingencies. The dagger. Try using the dagger on small fish. You can use the... Listen, I think I'm an easy to please sort of guy. I'm the kind of critic who when a game is good says you, you gotta buy it. And when a game is bad, um, I say, maybe give it a shot if you're a fan of the genre. But there's some things I cannot abide by. Calling the mouse button a key? This is ridiculous. As, as a, a mod of r slash PC master race, this is untenable for me. I will play the game for 200 hours and then issue a negative Steam review talking about how they um, betrayed me. It's right here that I started a restaurant with my friend that sells one-of-a-kind sushi! The sushi sold here is made from fresh fish caught in the blue hole, where fish from all over the world can be found. Don't you think people will go nuts for it? Yum, I'm already craving it. I bet, so why don't you join me in this awesome venture as well? What do you say? I mean, I love eating, but I don't know a thing about cooking. That never stopped people on Kitchen Nightmares from starting their own business. Hello. That never stopped people from emptying their entire retirement fund into opening um, Burger Kitchen in Studio City, California. Or Jay Willie's in... I'm going to say that was in Indianapolis. All you need to do is dive to get the ingredients. Doesn't sound too bad, right? I will accept. So I can eat as much sushi as I want? Yeah, sure. You have to pay, though. Can't wait to check it out. The sushi restaurant next to the Blue Hole. It was supposed to open tonight, but I'm not sure if it's ready. I'm playing Dave the Diver. Yeah. The Fish Game! You heard of Squid Game 2023? We got The Fish Game. The Fish Game. The Fish Game, it just premiered on Netflix. We're excited to let you know as Netflix shareholders, Fish Game has been watched for over one trillion minutes, making it the single most quickly consumed piece of entertainment media in human history. Which is why it's so hard to bring you the news with a heavy heart that we have canceled the show. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ryan Reynolds, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and Kevin Hart need another 17 Lake Tahoe mansions. They've just, uh, I, I've read the treatment for their new movie from the writer-director of Red Notice, and I gotta tell you, it blows. We spent $375 million on this. It will be promoted on the Netflix front page every day until well, you die, cancel your subscription, or we go out of business. Thanks for your understanding. I gotta tell you, I kind of reached peak, um, I'm just gonna say it, like peak Karen energy yesterday. I took my daughter out shopping, just to kill some time, really. I, I bought her a, a, a book from the pharmacy. We went to a couple different stores. She had a good time. We bought some cat treats. The cats did not enjoy them. They, they were very entitled. But then it was mostly just to kill some time. And then I was going to take her to her favorite restaurant, right? Because it was like, you know, it's her last day before daycare comes back. I walked her to the restaurant. I got her all excited. She's talking about what she wants to eat. Restaurant is closed for lunch on Mondays. I was starting to say things like, for real, to my daughter, I was like, well, it looks like you're going to have to have a new favorite restaurant because, like, this one doesn't want our business. And I was just, it was the emotions talking. Then I realized, like, what, how entitled am I that I expect this restaurant to be open at, like, 1 p.m. on a Monday, even though I'm the only person that would be going to eat? Like, I expect them to open the, like, have, like, a, a host and three cooks and two servers 
fire up the, the pizza ovens and stuff like that the day after New Year's just so I can go in there and have lunch with my daughter. So I gave him a little credit after that. I, I said, you know what? At least they're open for dinner. And then we cooked because I'm not going to support... I mean, Kim Kardashian said it. People don't want to work these days. You don't want to work these days? Then, then we'll have dinner at home. Okay, I will, I will add Joel if you just shut up. It's been added. Now, instead of typing add Joel, you can, you can just type Joel instead. And you know what? Don't, let me worry about the subreddit posts about how the, the vibe in chat has, has gone so far south after adding all these emotes, okay? You just let me deal with that. Does he know? Titanic 2? Hey guys, I know I said my New Year's resolution was not to quote stuff from iFunny anymore, but um, release the Kraken! My reaction when I am releasing the Kraken! Hello gamers, haven't seen you since last year. I'm gonna cut you a little bit of slack, okay? Because you might not have been here. at the insane unhinged rant that I did at the start of the stream. Otherwise, for, for today and for the rest of my life, any jokes about how it's for the first time this year, hasn't seen this since last year, hey guys, uh, long time no see, it feels like it's been a year, instant, permanent IP ban. I don't have the power to IP ban you. But I can at least... Uh, you know what? I, I wouldn't ban you because that's too much satisfaction. Instead, I would time you out. And in, as the parameter for how long, int 32.max value. Okay? So just be careful. Because that's like 60 years or something. <laughs> Can't remember. I don't think that's in seconds. I think int 32.max value returns uh, an int uh, that symbolizes a number of ticks. And a tick is represented as one unit of time i can't remember listen it's complicated okay i'm, I'm not john shars troop 99 percent of all wasabi is fake it makes a big difference wasabi is one of those things that i'm uh i'm a little snobby about a little was snobby there's two things that uh, like i if the if the fake wasabi is at least is grainy like real wasabi i got no problem with it it's just when it's clearly like in an icing tube and they're just going they're just crapping out like creamy green roses into the into the sushi that I'm not into as much there's also there's one more thing 2023 resolution for all sushi restaurants that do uh, take out delivery yet we don't need to be putting the plastic grass in the sushi anymore okay we're past it it's an extreme waste it's not even like it doesn't look good aesthetically when you open up the styrofoam container, which probably shouldn't be styrofoam to begin with, and then there's like little plastic grass separating some sushi from the other sushi. We don't need that anymore. Get rid of it, okay? But And get rid of the plastic grass and bring back the plastic straw. At least the plastic straw is functional. The plastic grass doesn't do anything. Oh no, my dynamite roll is touching my sriracha mayonnaise teriyaki chicken cheeseburger roll. This would never fly in Japan. The sacred art of sushi has been desecrated. Yes, what is it, sir? Wow, I'm always right about these things. Ha ha, Dr. Bacon? I gotta do it this way. Sorry. You can move faster by pressing shift. What will they think of next? I like a lionfish. We went to the aquarium this weekend. I'm starting to think honestly. I mean, every, when you go to the aquarium, everyone likes the classics, right? Everybody likes the, the sea lions, the seals, the otters, the penguins, the sharks. Hold on, 
what is this? Enhanced harpoon tip. It's been sharpened to a fine edge. How about that? I'm starting to... Like, we've been to the aquarium so much in the last, like, year and a bit. I'm starting to get into kind of, like, the more indie fish. He's unstoppable. He's the greatest fish to ever do it. Um, like, the, the red lionfish, for example. I'm starting to also get into... Um, the anemone fish, also known as a clownfish. I saw a real surgeon fish. This is a rocket launcher. Shock bang stick. They're starting to make the pets from Super Auto Pets into real animals. And, and honestly, I'm here for it. Okay, we only got 56% oxygen left, though. You kind of screwed me on this one. Give me one of these fish. I don't know if it's possible, like, if it's healthy to eat uh, fish that we poison, but... Excuse me? These hitboxes. What the heck is this? I've applied poison to you and you have been killed. <laughs> Get owned. I love a game with mini games, dude. Like, I feel the same way about mini games that people who have bad taste feel about, like, crafting in games. They're like, oh, there's so much stuff to do. I'm like... I, I go off when there's like 25 different ways to move my mouse. Such a cheap shot. <laughs> I was talking about, I mean, I don't know if Josh is still here. I was talking about it with a, with a friend of mine in our ancient group chat. He was talking about how he doesn't like uh, modern AAA games because basically like as soon as you boot them up, they ask you for your wallet. I was telling him like, I, I got... Less issue. Let's not say no issue. I got less issue with the fact that um, they're like microtransactions and way more issue with the fact that like every single game made by a, a, a public corporation has to be designed by committee. And as a result, they simply have to uh, make it as not not like amazing, but instead just likable enough that people buy the sequel in two years when it comes out. It drives me crazy. Every single game has to have... Every single game needs to be an open world. And also, you can drive a car. You can drive boats. You can drive airplanes. You can get out of the boat and swim. Also, you can craft. You, there's 900 different crafting materials. And then if you bring the crafting materials to this NPC, this NPC will add a foregrip to your gun. Oh, sorry, you brought him to the wrong NPC. You need to fast travel to the south part of the island, and he'll add an optic onto your gun. And then, okay, and, but then if you want to add, like, a barrel, you have to go to the northeast corner of the island. Anyway, as much as I don't... I didn't really vibe with Death Stranding, we need, like... 10 Hideo Kojima games to every Far Cry game. There should be like two Far Cries and we should be on like Death Stranding 9 at this point. That's it. Also, the other thing is I want like, um, I want every game to be like at least 80% shorter than it, than it is. Even Elden Ring? Yeah, like, well, to be honest with you, like, it's, Especially Elden Ring. Like, Elden Ring was so good. My my predominant complaint about Elden Ring was the fact that, like, by the time the finale rolled around... Well, like, I booted up uh, New Game Plus and played it for, like, 15 minutes. And then was like, no, I'm, are you crazy? I'm not playing this anymore. Like, I said, the, just the, the sheer thought of having to make my way through Elden Ring again. I'm going to die. Um... I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to die. Never mind, I'm going to be fine. I'm um never mind, I'm not going to be fine. Bro, let me go. Let me go. Let me go. I need to Listen. I need to go to my escape pod. You'd rather play a game twice rather than one long game? Yes. Because um it feels better to me to have a, a game that is. Let, let me figure. Let me figure out how I want to describe this. I don't want a game that's a hundred hours long, just because it has to be a hundred hours long. I would rather it be fifty hours long, and then if I want to, I can play the extra fifty hours because that, like, I could play it again. That feels better than 
hey, this game's 100 hours long. I enjoyed the first 35 hours, but the next 65 feel like they might be a slog. You can always just quit, but you always feel like, you know, oh, maybe I'm missing out on when it starts to pick back up again. I would rather have something that's like into the breach and it's like, hey, it's nine minutes long and uh, you want to play it a hundred times in a row. That sounds way better to me. That's a you problem? Why is it every time I just express an opinion, people are like, well, I disagree. Okay. This is your first day on planet Earth? <laughs> you could disagree. There's the I don't expect us all to, do, to agree on everything. That's a you problem. There are games that fulfill that. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I think I'm playing one of them right now. But when people are like, you know, why don't you play uh, Persona 5? You can point back to this rant. Because I feel like it's probably the same fucking people. Because when I was talking about it, they were like, oh, if, you, if this is your opinion, you would love Yakuza. Yeah, okay. Maybe I, I want shorter games. Let's go into Yakuza and get cyberbullied into doing a bunch of side quests where you have ramen with a Japanese pornographic actress. Have you seen the menu? I want to see it. It's on my list of things I want to see, but probably never will. So instead, I just keep reading the Wikipedia synopses for all these movies that I'll probably never see. You guys ever seen Francis, huh? Me neither. I know every story beat, though. Hey, I did... <laughs> I can't believe I hadn't mentioned this yet. While uh, shaving on Friday, I think, um, I watched 35, 40 minutes of White Noise, the new Noah Bombach movie featuring Adam Driver, Greta Gerwig, Don Cheadle, Andre 3000. It's a star-studded cast. I don't think in my life I have ever... It's been a long time since I have hated a movie as much as I hated this. I know that it, a lot of, like, because I went to, as soon as I, I, let me put it this way. I got 40 minutes in, and then I said, I'm not finishing this. So I wikipedia the synopsis of what happens in the story and went, okay. And then I went to IMDB, figuring that this was going to be, like, one of the most hated movies of the year. And uh, it has, like, a 6.2 or something like that which is actually respectable. I hated every second of watching it. I hated the way the people talked. It was like if somebody saw a Yorgos Lanthimos film and tried to copy it, but without having any of the panache, you were pogging from I'm thinking of ending things. No, not true. Um, I, I, I'm thinking of ending things. I, I'm, to be honest with you, I think that I probably hate that movie more than White Noise because I watched the whole thing. I'm thinking of ending things made me want to, uh, it made me want to stop watching movies forever. That movie's fucking sick. I'm sorry, I didn't take a film studies class. I never built up a, a callus for watching boring content uh, by sitting in a, a crowded auditorium and watching the film Wavelength where it starts with a zoomed in shot of somebody's apartment door, spends 22 minutes zooming out, slightly pans to the right and then zooms back in on another part of the apartment. You've made this joke before? Yeah? I've also seen the movie White Noise before. It was called I'm Thinking of Ending Things. Thank you for reminding me of that awful movie. There are dozens of us who enjoy intellectual movies but also would prefer if they had some entertainment value as well. Don't even get me started. Three most hated movies I've seen in the last, uh, I don't know, probably five years. White Noise is definitely up there. Um, I'm thinking of ending things as the second for sure. A machete? A katana? The, th the third is High Life. The science fiction movie also featuring Andre 3000 but, and Robert Pattinson that seems to delight in boring the viewer. Have you seen Margin Call though? Now that is a movie, dude. Margin Call, that's a fucking movie. I can't take your opinion seriously because you cried during Black Panther. You seem to be taking my opinion because you're here watching the stream. Three years, four years, five years after that anecdote first took place. So you seem to be willfully taking my opinion seriously for whatever reason. I'm not saying you should. But you're here nonetheless. 
So you didn't cry? No, I did, but like the older you get, I mean, let me put it this way. You're gonna start crying like all the time. The older you get, the more you're gonna cry. It's just the way of the world, man. You start to cry at, you know, sentimental advertisements. I only cry in good movies. That's gonna change. Wait until you reach like, you know, age 34 and then you see the end of Hot Tub Time Machine. You could, there, there's so many movies I've seen where uh, while watching it, I was like, this shit is bad and boring. And then at the end, they play like once in a lifetime or something like that and do like a, a montage of someone getting their life together. And I'm like, I mean, I still hate this shit, but I'm crying for sure. Like, it's so inspiring. I cried during that movie about the St. Louis Rams quarterback. The, you cried during the Kurt Warner movie? I haven't seen that. And I, in all likelihood, I never will. But I, that's an inspiring story, right? Nobody, nobody thought he could do it, man. And then miraculously, he gets a call from uh, who, Mike McCarthy. Hold on, I, I, I knew this at one point. Don't ink me. And now cried at Avatar. I have not seen Avatar yet. One day. The new one? I haven't seen the new one. I haven't seen the old one. I haven't seen the prequel, also known as the first Airbender. I haven't seen the last Airbender. I haven't seen the M. Night Shyamalan uh, debasement of the franchise. I've never seen any film with Avatar in its, in its title. And I believe that that's true. I am a little familiar with Ultima 7, the shroud of the Avatar, but that's it. Weren't you vibing the new movies in 2009? Yeah, that was during a period where I went to the theater to see like a lot of movies by myself. But to be honest, what happened, and I, I apologize because people have definitely heard this story before. Avatar came out like Christmas 2009-ish. Um, and all of my friends and housemates went home to their ancestral homes, largely in the greater Toronto area. They all saw Avatar independently. And when they came back, they were like, you gotta see it, it's such an experience. And I was like, do you wanna go see it with me? And they're like, no, not really, I already saw it. By the way, you absolutely, 100%, you have to see it in the theater. You have to see it in the theater. So I procrastinated, didn't see it in the theater, and then the shit was not in the theater anymore. And I was like, I guess I'm never gonna see it. Because they said uh, the only, you will never be able to have an experience like seeing this movie in the theater. As soon as it came out on DVD, I was like, well, I guess I missed my window. And just like that, exactly, 13 years go by. A million little nights and days go by. You had six months? Bro, are you James Cameron? Were well, you so pressed one person hasn't seen Avatar? It is crazy. Someone posted like a, a, it was, I don't know, what. just a graphic. It's not like an infographic. But it was like, here's all the movies that have ever made over $1 billion. Which one is the most surprising? And honestly, looking at all of them, I gotta say, I still think it's Avatar 1. Avatar 2 making over a billion is not that surprising because Avatar 1 made so much money. But the first Avatar becoming like the highest grossing movie of all time is a crazy story. Cause like, <laughs> I didn't know anybody who was excited for the movie at all. And then like a year after it came out, I feel like I've not heard anybody talking about it until the sequel came. I mean, we had like seven years of James Cameron making the sequels and people being like, we don't want this. And then the sequel came out, it had a billion dollars. Yet it, it, it crossed a billion dollars like silently. Anyway, I'm not anti-Avatar, I've just, I've, I've never seen it. All the other movies that have made a billion dollars made like perfect sense. The live action remake of like The Lion King, the live action remake of Aladdin, um, like seven Marvel movies, Top Gun Maverick, it all, those all made sense to me. Avatar 1 seems like a crazy underdog story. Twitch is a little bit broken. I mean, honestly, like, <laughs> listen, I hope you guys enjoyed the internet, like, while it was at its peak. I really do feel like, sh I can't say this specifically with respect to Twitch. I do feel like the internet's gotten, like, a lot worse in the past maybe two, three years. Every website has been rolled up into, like, one of five companies. Yeah, like, software's gotten slower since computers have gotten faster. Chrome has, has never been worse than it is right now until tomorrow. And then we're, we're entering, like, um, 
tighter economic conditions, right? Like, this is how things worked essentially at the tail end of a period of generationally low interest and cheap debt. People were, companies like uh, Facebook would just be like, you know, hiring people just to, just to hire them. I don't know. I can't really speak to that. I've never worked in the industry, but it felt, it felt good to say. <laughs> I'm not saying everything used to be better, but definitely, like, I feel like tech used to be, like, you know, faster. At least, or, like, you have better uptime. There was also a period of, like, um, I mean, like, in 2008, like, shit just did not work some of the time. But there was, like, a golden period from, like, 2015 to, like, 2019, where I was like, shit's working pretty good right now. We are, like, legit living in the future. Modern internet has also ruined my attention span. Honestly, one of the great things about having a kid is that I think it is really, it's brought me back to like, like my brain is back in the 90s. I spend so much of like every day having to use my imagination, you know, driving a, a, a Peppa Pig train over a Lego train track, crashing into like a crowd of Pokemon and stuff like that, reading a bunch of like children's books, making up rules for new games and stuff like that. I've definitely, okay, so I gotta follow the dolphin real quick. I've undone uh, a lot of the, the like TikTok damage to my brain in the last like year and a half for sure. What content are you proud of? I don't know, man. Like I'm, t I'm too old for this conversation. I'm sorry. Like I'm just, <laughs> I picture myself more like, there's no ambition behind what I do. There's routine. And I think in that there's some nobility. You know, not everything needs... Like, I, I am reaching a point for sure where, like, I hear content creators talk so highly about, like, the stuff that they make. And they're like, it's all about trying out new ideas. And then, you know, I want to be on the cutting edge of YouTube content. And then you look at their thumbnail, and the thumbnail is, like, letting chat choose what I put in my ass. And I'm like, it's not that they're wrong. It's just that I guess I'm in a different mindset. I, I consider myself less like I'm making... Um, you know, like once in a lifetime content and more like, I'm like car talk, you know, I'm like an NPR podcast that's been on the, the air for like 40 years. You wouldn't go to the car talk guy and be like, what's your favorite episode of car talk? Oh, it's the one where we taught them how to fix the vapor lock in their Pontiac Sunfire. You're just like, no, I mean, it's just a comfortable thing to have on while you're, uh, while you're driving or something like that, you know? That's, I've, I think I've, I've acknowledged my place. Yeah, I consider myself like maybe the spiritual successor of the Blue Collar Comedy Tour. One of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite ensemble stand-up comedy films. The original Kings of Comedy has also got to be up there. I acknowledge that I'm, I'm something in the background while you work and that's fine. Because that's how I use Twitch too. Hey, you haven't quit diving yet, have you? I, Ellie, I died yesterday. I perished, I ran out of oxygen under the surface of the ocean and was saved by the charitable act of a, of a friend. Um, I'm doing some investigating for an important paper. I'm gonna need some help. Give me three blue shells. Give me, give me three shells. Give me three shells, mister. Give me three shells towards the door. As Lizzo said, it's about damn time. That is true. She was talking about badges. Turn up the badges. I, I will say, if I were Lizzo, here's how I'd write the song. I would say, turn down the music. Turn up the lights. I got a feeling it's going to be an early night. Okay. It's about bedtime. That could work. That could work. Plus two, plus two, minus two, there it's an even split. So as a YouTube Andy who hasn't been around for over a year, what happened to the Isaac runs? Here's a better question for you. It's more of a question about the human psyche. You obviously stopped watching because, you know, something else demanded your time, probably a superior form of entertainment. You really, who, who are you, you piece, to come into my stream and say, hey, what happened to that content that made me uh, get bored with you in the first place? Ask, ask yourself, I guess, what I'm trying to say is, ask yourself why you care. Obviously, if you were into it, you wouldn't have taken a, a year hiatus. 
All right, good point. I love the attitude era. What if he had work? Quit your job. <laughs> Quit your job to watch me stream. I was in a coma. No, you weren't. That shit only happens in Sandra Bullock movies. Like, you could be in a coma, but not for a whole year, right? What's that? Oh, you're dead. Sorry. What's the average coma length? It's probably like two weeks. 19 years? What? His daycare worker was off. Now that I can respect. Honestly, if I'm in a coma, don't wake me up. I'm doing okay. Let me sleep. I'd be so pissed if this was like a dream. And then you wake me up and like, I'm still teaching ESL in South Korea. Oh, man. <laughs> don't wake me up before you go-go. Let me sleep before you go-go. Someone in chat keeps asking about whether you're going to check your business inbox. Yeah, I know. I just... Uh, <laughs> it's okay. No disrespect. Maybe you sent a, an actual business request to the business inbox. But I did audit your chat message earlier. And at first you were like... The first 20 messages were like... NL, wake up. NL, you're in a coma. NL, wake up. You're in a coma. And then like the next message is like... I sent you a business email like a long time ago. Are you ever going to check it? I don't know what you, I don't know what you want me to tell you there that that you can't read from between the lines. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe it's genuine, but this is this is why I I outsource the business email inbox is so that I don't have to be the bearer of bad news. You know, do get it twisted. I will read it, and whatever it is, I will say yes to it, guaranteed. The honest answer, like here, and I mean, this is probably not what you want to hear. Four and a half? Why? I thought we did really well. But either way, like, David checks the business inbox, like, every day. Or at least every other day. But, like, he only brings me the stuff that he thinks I'm gonna be into. And even then, I say no to, like, 80% of it. So, like, you, there's, like, a filter to a filter to a filter. We say, we say thank you to David. Thank you, David. Who's David? It doesn't matter. You don't need to know him. Not not everybody in my life is uh, exists as a side character to then be memed into an arc to be part of the narrative uh, bend of the stream. Okay, he's just a guy. Sometimes he's in chat. Maybe it's David Schwimmer. Maybe it isn't. Your agent is David Schwimmer. Yeah, is that okay? Who's David Schwimmer's agent? Matthew Perry. Do you think Ross from Friends ever got Schwimmer's ear? Mm, I think he had, he was born with Schwimmer's ear, quite frankly. I can't, it's not a joke, it's just his last name. Remember when he was trying to be a serious actor for a bit? What's your problem with David Schwimmer? Like, God, I think he seems like a, I mean, I'm not going to say he seems like a nice guy, because how do I know, but like, I've never had a problem with him. I've never had a reason to believe that like, you know, I should be rooting for his, uh, like, failure. Favorite friend from Friends? I mean, keep in mind that, like, I watched Friends when I was, like, literally, you know, from the age of, like, 5 till 13 or something like that. I was a Chandler head, personally. I'm a little embarrassed about it now. But, uh, yeah, I thought I, Chandler was, I related to him the most out of all the, out of all the friends. Chan Chandler and Ross, for sure. Joey, I did not respect. I was like Tommy Lee Jones working with uh, Jim Carrey on Batman Forever. I could not sanction his buffoonery. What about Monica? I always found Monica kind of annoying. Monica! I like that episode. The one where Ja Rule guest stars as... Ooh, go to sleep. Ja Rule guest stars as uh, Jennifer Aniston's friend from college. And when he sees her, he goes, Monica! Bro, I did not say a negative thing about women. I said a negative thing about Monica Geller. Name a woman who doesn't annoy you. Uh, okay. Malala Yousavi. Based, 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 based. <laughs> you think Malala's ever played Among Us? I'm trying to think. How, how old would Malala be? She was like 14 in 2012. 
I don't know, the math's kind of impossible. I wouldn't be surprised if she played Among Us, let's put it that way. You prefer a good hot dog or a good corn dog? Now that's a question. I would say it's not even close. I definitely prefer a good hot dog. I'm not anti-corn dog, but I'm, I'm not... Excuse me? PPL? I'm not that into the corn dog renaissance. Kelp. Kelp! I need somebody! Anyway, yes, I, I have had um, Korean corn dogs. I'm still just, I don't know, I'm not... I'm not that into them. Because I feel like the... I know this is going to be taken out of context. I don't think I've ever had a, a corn dog where the wiener was good. Like, the... The breading can be tasty. But usually, like, the hot dog itself on the inside is just like... You know, like... Pink mechanically separated meat. Like, there's, there's nothing gourmet about it. Which is fine, not everything has to be haute cuisine. I'm crazy at completing quests, but, um, you know, it, if I'm eating a, a corn dog and the principal benefit of the corn dog is that, like, there's a bunch of crinkle-cut french fries surrounding a bad hot dog, I'd rather just eat the crinkle-cut french fries, I think. Make your own corn dog with fresh batter. No, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that, no. I'm picking my battles, so that's a battle I am uh, abstaining from. Why are you dunking on them? I'm not dunking on corn dogs. I'm merely sharing my opinion that I feel like I would much rather have a a good hot dog than a good corn dog. Yo, can you give your thoughts on the Peloton just work out forehead option? The Peloton does have a uh, it has a just ride button, which is really funny. Dan, did I ever tell you that I was talking? My dad has the Peloton app. He doesn't have the bike. I was talking to him about riding the bike and. He was like, yeah, I take classes like two to three times a week, but I never listen to the coach. I just put the resistance on like whatever feels right and pedal at exactly the same rhythm for 30 minutes straight. Man is, is psychotic. Literally, if you've never taken a Peloton class, the coaches go like, all right, um, for this next song, you're gonna pick up the speed of your legs. We're gonna take your resistance down 40 to 45, resistance uh, 90 to 100. My dad's sitting there, 52 resistance, just pumping out 80 cadence the whole time. It's based? I mean, it's, I don't know, it's funny. I don't know if I say it's based. I told him, I was like, you gotta start following the the coaches because you're. it honestly is gonna be better because your legs probably get tired of running the same resistance, same cadence. You get some, you, you'll slow down with higher resistance, you'll work different muscles, you'll speed up lower resistance, you work different muscles. Like, I honestly think I, I, I blew his mind when I told him like his workouts will be, will be better as a result of actually listening to the coaches, but it's not muscle confusion. It's just like, you know, when you're in the saddle, your quads take a beat and then you get out of the saddle and your ass tightens up. God, I wish that was me. NL, I babysitted my one-month-old niece. I am going to get a vasectomy immediately. I mean, brother, welcome to the show. Like, one month is like, they don't do anything. So, like, if, they, <laughs> if that's... If you're tapping out after babysitting a one-month-old, you are making the right decision, quite frankly. Because I was, I remember thinking back to, like, when my baby was one month old, or one month old, and I was like, oh, man, this is, like, so much work. Literally, I was just putting her, like, in her rocker and rocking it with my foot while I played Rocket League. And then after, like, three hours, I'll be like, my ankle's kind of tired. I'd say right around, whenever they start to, to really walk, that's when it gets crazy. Because you're basically like a prison warden. Like, it's, she's, my daughter's two and a bit right now. She's like 2.33 years old. And there's, like... I don't think it's as hard as it was when she had just started to walk. Because I can talk to her. I can reason with her. She goes crazy sometimes. Like sometimes we, it, when she's like in a store and she's like, no, I don't want to hold your hand. I'm like, you got to hold my hand. We're like, you know, I, we need to walk together. She'll just like lay down on the tile in Canadian Tire. But I'm like so inoculated because it happens all the time that I'm just like, I'm just going to let her lay down here for like 20 seconds. 
And then after like 20 seconds with no reaction, she just gets up and holds my hand. Anyway, I still think two and a half is like, it's not as hard as it used to be. Because like, when the physical skills develop, but the language skills are not there yet, it's like, you're basically just trying to make sure they don't kill themselves multiple times every day. No, don't throw yourself over the railing of the stairs. Don't stick your head between the railing. Don't try to put your finger into this electrical outlet. Don't uh, crawl under the dining room table and then stand up super fast and smash your head on the stone. Don't, you know... I know you want to climb up on the bar stool by yourself, but you're going to fall over. I know you want to jump like up and down on like the corner of the bed, but can you just move to the middle, please? Stone dining table? Bro, I, I live in Minecraft, okay? But now it's actually like rewarding, for sure. Like, um... Being a parent of like a one and a half year old is a fairly thankless job. That's why you gotta like thank each other. But then once your kid can actually say like, you know, daddy, I love you, then you're like, it's all worth it. I still need a little me time, but <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's all worth it. And now, honestly, I really appreciate hanging out with my nieces because they're like 7 and 12 now. And they're literally just people. They'll start talking to me about like, you know, some stuff that makes absolutely no sense at all. But at least they're carrying the conversation. All I have to do is go like, oh, really? Whoa, that's cool. Hey, what's sixth grade like these days? And then like you can ask. I don't know if you know this. Maybe you haven't talked to too many kids recently. You can ask a kid, like, the dumbest fucking question of all time, and they'll give you an earnest answer. It's a beautiful thing. Example? Well, it, like, listen, this is just... I'm concocting one from my head, but I feel like when I was talking to my nieces, you could just ask them ridiculous questions. You could be like, you know, hey, what's school like? And they could just go off for, like, ten minutes. And you just go, whoa, really? And then, they, like... I don't know if people realize that th this is why older people always talk about the way things were back in their day. It's not nostalgia, it's just relating. See, the, because if you're the same age, what you don't realize is you're saying all the time what things are like back in your day, but it's just that today is your day. So when I'm talking to my 12-year-old niece about what middle school is like, and she says something about middle school, and I'm like, well, back in my day, we didn't learn calculus until the 11th grade. People would be like, wow, that's what a boomer would say. What do you want me to say? Goo goo ga ga, hit the gritty, like that's not, I can't relate to it. I gotta relate through the lens of, of the past, because that's when I lived that shit. When in doubt, hit the gritty. I've never hit the gritty, but I would say, like, never say never. There might be a time where I decide it's worth it. Go back to middle school? Bro, honestly, if you sent me back to middle school, I would be valedictorian easily. Don't get me wrong, having been to middle school, like... You know, there's a lot of smart kids in middle school, but their priorities are all messed up. Kids will literally have, like, infinite time, and they'll be like, I didn't want to do my homework. Why? I don't know. My ass would be, like, getting home and doing my homework immediately. As, as soon as I stepped foot in the door, I would do that homework immediately. I would proofread it. I would make sure it's 100%. Now, you, I would be a nerd, absolutely. I would absolutely crush middle school right now. It's not even close. I even did it when I was in night school. Now, mind you, I had w literally one class, so I'm not trying to say, like, it was that hard. Thanks, that would have been useful 15 years ago. <laughs> well, you know. But like, here's the thing, you gotta do it anyway. Why not, why not do it in, like, the most stress-free way possible? Which is, like, uh... You know, d knocking it out immediately so that you can just enjoy the rest of your night instead of... I don't want this piece of junk. Instead of like, oh, I'll do it in two hours. Oh, no, actually, like, uh, wait till I hit level 99 Agi in OSRS first. Like, easy to say when you're not drained from school. Bro, what are you, we're talking about kids in like the sixth grade. What do you mean drained from school? You get two recesses a day and a lunch break, and you just sit in the chair while somebody else, like, talks at you the whole time. Like, what's, <laughs> what, what do you mean drained? You're 12 years old. You're sleeping like 11 hours a night. 
How drained could you be? Introverts don't exist? What are you talking about? All that running around was exhausting? Bro, that's why you get to eat the world's worst sandwich for lunch. Literally two pieces of Wonder, Wonder Bread with a single slice of salami in the middle. It's a 90 calorie sandwich with 3000% of your daily allotment of sodium in it. Okay, if you are living in South Korea and you're a middle school student, first off, you're not watching the stream because you're like in school 18 hours a day right now. But yes, that's a very different story for sure. The kids in sixth grade, when I taught English in South Korea, they were learning like the same math that I learned in my first year of like university calculus. Nerds. Yeah, <laughs> so true. <laughs> so true. <laughs> oh, man. Being a kid was easy in hindsight, but I was stressed out at the time. I think that's fair. And that's like basically the, the reason for my worldview that we should give kids jobs. Like we should have life structured in such a way that it works in reverse. It should start really hard like child physical labor it, and like dangerous stuff too, like Alaskan crab fishing and like going into the coal mines and stuff. And then maybe when you're like 12, then you can have like a nine to five office job. And then when you're like 25, you're like CEO. And then at 30, you go to the MBA. And then at 40, you go to school because your ass would like appreciate school. You'd be like, oh my God, I'm learning so much. And then, I don't know, starting at like age 60, you get to be like a baby again. Like you don't, be, I, like even when I'm 60, I don't know if I'm just built this way. I don't really want to poop my pants and have someone change my diaper. But someone like, you know, prepare like literally every like meal for me and handle my every will. Sure, that sounds nice. 60 you become a streamer plus two plus two would you send your kid to the mines i would if i had to send them to a mine i would prefer for it to be like one of the ones that's not bad like not asbestos or something like that maybe like i feel like the salt mines can't be that bad right by by comparison Whose kids would you send to the dangerous mines? I don't know, someone else's. I didn't really thought that far. I, honestly, it's not my problem. <laughs> POV, you're me? Wow, this place is wow. It appears to be some kind of sea people record chamber. What's the other one? Okay, I gotta. The other one is more like. And then this one is. Look at that mural back there. No human could have painted that so deep underwater. Maybe these are some ancient civilization that sank from seismic activity. A good point, but that style of painting and architecture can't be seen anywhere above ground. Please first investigate this place. Do you think that people should have to have a license to drive cars? I... I ask myself this a lot. Because I think it's one of society's great unsolvable questions. I'm gonna say... on I go back and forth on it all the time. I'm gonna say no. Because here's the thing. I think if you just... Ha if people didn't have driver's licenses, it would probably be horrific. People would be getting into accidents like nonstop. Uh, you know, they, they wouldn't be undergoing the proper level of training in order to operate a machine like this. But I also feel like it would sort of sort itself out in like maybe like two years. And then everything would start running smoothly. So true. So, so false. So false. I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of things I think we could let the free market uh, decide for us. And, and we could cut a lot of bureaucracy. It's an elite enemy. What was that? He's gone Morpheus mode? 
Like, for example, underage drinking, okay? Why do we have drinking age, uh, minimum, or, I, I guess it's a minimum, yeah. Why do we have drinking age minimums? We should just, um, say forget that, and instead, just let it ride. Ooh, cutie, cutie. Is that his blood or my blood? <laughs> And then, sure, like, a bunch of people would probably suffer, like, catastrophic, like, brain injuries or whatever. But then they took personal responsibility. Those, those uh, primary school students took personal responsibility. I disagree with this opinion. Okay, me too. I was just trying it on for size. What's next, a license to make toast in my own damn toaster? <laughs> Yeah, in general, I think a driver's license is uh, is pretty positive for society. Because you know I love cars so much. I'm going to guess the answer for like 90% of people is no. But did you see the, the video from Vancouver New Year's Eve where someone was shooting fireworks off their balcony? But then they accidentally... Well, let's just put it this way. An accident happened. Either they dropped the firework or they had it misaligned. So then it shot the firework inside of their apartment. And it looked like... Uh, it looked like in Home Alone 2 when Marv gets electrocuted. Like their whole apartment was just going... And like smoke pouring out from it. Anyway. It is a great video. Because they're like... It's like... Two, one. Happy New Year. It's from like three years ago? No, it was from like three days ago. It's easy to get it confused, but you're, you're wrong by a factor of 365. They did not die. You can read the news. It's on our Vancouver. The fire department came and then the people wouldn't open the door. So then the, they had to call the police and then the police forced them to open the door. I accidentally shot a firework backwards on the fourth floor of my apartment complex in 2014. That was so embarrassing. Bro, why are you shooting fireworks off your fourth floor balcony in it? So why is why my damn insurance payments are so high? I hate fireworks. I, I like so fireworks have been like illegal in the city proper unless you're like a mining company that holds a convention at the convention center and thus gives the city a lot of money. And this year at New Year's Eve, I saw a lot of people online complaining about it. No fun city. Mm. Mm. New Year's isn't fun unless at, at exactly midnight they go... I was having a great time. First off, I was in bed at like 9.45 to begin with. But uh, the fact that like just regular citizens can't just shoot explosives off in the sky... I was, I was living stress-free. I was having a great time. I could spin you a bunch of yarns about how like, oh, it's really bad for people with PTSD from, you know, tours of duty. Oh, it's so bad for dogs. Th those things support my position, but that's not the reason I have them. The reason I have this opinion is just because I find fireworks fucking annoying. So the fact that they're illegal in a city, I think is fantastic. I'm very for it. <laughs> just watch the video that's funny as hell the whole apartment just lights up and all the windows are flashing it's it's aesthetic goals for sure here you go chet dan you should watch this this is like a, a tiktok of someone falling down the stairs like it's so <laughs> or when somebody uh in home depot takes like a cardboard uh tube and goes like uh Hey! And then the other dude is like a 55-year-old guy who just beats the crap out of him. It's it's an all-time video for sure. Oh. I wish they were banned here. People are legit calling firefighters and ambushing them with fireworks? What the hell? They're like calling 911 and then when the fire department shows up, they're shooting explosives at them. Well, that's already illegal, I guess. Can I watch it, or is it TOS? It's not TOS, they don't die. They're just like, I mean, they just set off some fireworks inside of their apartment. Here, I'll let you hear the sound. Here it comes. Oh 
That's pretty good. That's a classic. <laughs> this is a great video. It's the first time I've seen it with sound. Hello, Chibli. Hello, Chibli is the... I, I make fun of Chibli from time to time, but I feel like I can make fun of Chibli from time to time because now I watched uh, Chibli's stream with Chibli's Gen Z friends. They were all making fun of me. I felt like I was the like a, a friend's friend that got invited or something. Like eight close friends were at a bar and then I showed up because like one of them knew me and invited me and vouched for me. Then I showed up and they were all telling inside Joe, hey Ryan, what's being a dad like? I'm gonna have a kid soon, I'm really scared. Then I give like a heartfelt answer about how like it's a lot of work, but it's really rewarding. Everyone's like, he's not having a kid. Bro, why are you fucking with the new guy? Dude, that's so, don't let him get you. Anyway, so basically Chibli, I think I'm saying fuck you. That's what I'm saying. I'm sorry, man. It's okay. I know you guys were drinking. You guys were all hyped up off, uh, off the Mad Dog 2020 or whatever it was. Why do you sound so robotic today? It's January 3rd. I don't think you've uh, prepaid for enough packets from your ISP. They're probably sending you derelict packets. Like how when you don't pay your electrical bill, they start sending you lesser electrons from the power company. I'm letting you know, because here's the thing. You might be like, because of the holidays, cause like a time dilation. You might have forgotten to pay your ISP bill, so they're sending you derelict packets. That's my thinking, because I sound the same as ever. Wouldn't you check your mail the most on holidays? Yeah, it's, it's, hey, it's Christmas Day. Let me go open my mailbox. Oh, wait. The postal workers have a union. They don't deliver letters today. They're busy spending time with the ones they love and their family. Great day. Wait, possibly the worst day on the calendar to check your mailbox. It's... Don't talk about me about opening your mailbox. You think I, I've been doing it for a decade and a half at this point. No, I'm very pro-union, especially the, post, the postal workers, because I don't want to receive mail. The mail I receive is either advertisements or the government being like, hey, pay me more tax. The less mail I receive, the better. So I love, whenever it, like, it, the weather's really bad and they're like, we're not delivering letters today, I'm like, let's go. Do you tip your mailman? Um, no. Uh, I think if you have like uh, just your own mailbox, then like at Christmas, you could put like, some money in your mailbox to give to the mailman. But we have like a shared mailbox situation. So I'm not going to open up like one of the little mail squares and then put money in there. It just seems like, I don't know. It's a little strange to tip through a cluster box. You, you must work for the Postal Service. You, you knew the, the real name for the, what I was talking about. Just give it to them? Sure, let me just go um, to another part of the city where my mailbox is and uh, wait for them to show up and then give them a $20 bill. Good idea. The Nobel Prize in uh, idiocy. I told you we're doing the Attitude Era 2023. If you suggest something stupid, we're gonna call it stupid. You don't live my life, I live my life. You're like, why don't you just do it like this? Oh. I thought of that one in like uh, 2013 when I started doing it this way. I do tip though, but hey, not a, not a joke. I've been going to this bakery for a while. I always tip the 15%, which is the minimum that the machine tells me I should. But until like three years ago, no one was tipping at bakery. So I'm not, I'm not taking too much heat for this, okay? Regardless, people act, it's the, most, it's the craziest putt I've ever seen in my life, VIP Daniel. Was that for Eagle? Daniel, holy cow. God damn. <laughs> anyway, I'd been going to the bakery long enough. They recognized me uh, yesterday. Kate, I didn't tell you this. They recognized me at the bakery yesterday. I came in with my daughter in the stroller. She was napping at the time. They said, aw, she's so cute. Would you like a ginger cookie? And I said, yes. And they said, oh, when we made it, we broke it. So we just, we were going to give it out to someone. Free ginger cookie. And I said, what I look like, a charity case? 
I took it, I threw it on the ground. You must think I'm a joke. I'm not gonna be part of your system. My dad's not a phone. Duh. How's the thumb? It's getting there. I'm eating. <laughs> 22 Jump Street is on par with the original, which is great. I know, I, I, I'm sorry. My name of Jeff is extremely funny. Scary Movie 2? No. no. Everybody got a birdie! Something of, I can't, I can't. Channing Tatum's voice. My name of Jeff. Oh, man. I can't, Jeff, I can't. <laughs> Final destination? You're sick. You're sick, Chibli. We're trying to have a real conversation here. You come in here with that... with that sickness. That's in the hole. Actual greatest shot in the history of the sport of golf. Look, uh, my drive got a replay. Oh, somebody didn't birdie. Welcome to being eliminated. Yes, it's a movie where he's a... Jonah Hill is a cop, okay? But he's one of the good ones, except he does use his opportunity of going undercover in a high school to seduce a high school senior, but I believe that she's of age. He's simply lying to her to sleep with her. And then at the end of the movie, she's like, they are in a relationship together, so it's okay. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Things were different back then. That was a long time ago. What was that? 2012? That was a, that's a long time ago. Who's the best Catwoman? Halle Berry. Trick question. Halle Berry. Everybody else. This is the thing, dude. If they made Catwoman in 2022, it's 2023. Sorry, the movie would just be called Selena. And then, like, 105 minutes into the 300-minute runtime, she would still just be working as, like, a waitress. It would be, like, the end of the movie, she would put on, like, a, a glove and go, like, or something, and then they would be, like, you know, so some strange cat woman found at this, on the security footage at the scene of the crime, and everyone would be, like, dude, finally, grown-up superhero movies are back. It drives you fucking crazy, man. Oh, hold on. We're in the finals. And then they'll be like, don't worry. Catwoman will return in Catwoman 2. We've hired, we've hired Neil Blomkamp to write the script and make it. That shit's never coming out, man. You'll be waiting for that shit into the 2040s. What is this? It's literally mathematically impossible. No, because it's so downhill. Don't get confused. I've never seen this course before. I'm crazy! <laughs> what an incredible shot. What is this absolutely psychotic green? Okay, I think we want like 3.7 backspin. Nice. I went four, maybe that's, maybe that's too much. We just gotta put it through the donut hole. You know what, I'm happier to be chipping, quite frankly. 
I don't know how we were going to make a putt through there anyway. Oh, no. Their second shot was crazy. No backspin. That's not great. Everyone shut the fuck up for a second. <clears throat> Good game. Good game. Dr. Chipinski. A call on line one for Dr. Chipinski. <laughs> Closest to the pin. I love closest to the pin, even though I have like a 20% success rate. looking at here it's uphill slightly we want to let's just see how this shakes out we don't want backspin because if we leave it short it'll it'll fall off the hill I think I want roughly a two-piece. Psychotic green. Actually, some backspin might have been nice, but it's still pretty good. <laughs> oh, we win these. Dude, the chip in just to make it, and then the the chip to win it, that feels fantastic. I told you we were right to abandon those stream snipers. Look at this. A28. Imagine where we'd be if I hadn't just thrown that last round away, though. What does the number mean? Okay, so the way I understand it, you get to A if you pass A30, you move to S0. I played Switch Sports Golf as a child, but found it to be too simple to be useful in real life. A mere 800 yard green, no fog of war, no technology tree, no random map or spawn position, only eight players, all, all sides, exact same clubs, etc. Polytopia addresses these limitations. So true. It's extremely good copy pasta. That's where I wanted it. Undercompensated for the wind. We got the most nightmarish bounce I've ever seen. The green is made of, of pure flubber. Flubber, I can't. Oh! How could you? Well, we will we did not make it. They should make super bad too. You know how it's super bad one, like the whole point is that they're like best friends, but they're like afraid of going to the next stage of their life, but it doesn't matter because the the train that is life approaches them nonetheless. They have no choice but to to move on. So like at the end of super bad, uh, you know, one of them's on the escalator going up the stairs waving and the other one is staying there in the mall because they're going on different paths in their life. Start a super bad too. We find out that right one second after super bad ended, actually Michael Sarah runs down the escalator and says, forget that. <laughs> 
let's do another year in high school. And then they go, yeah, and then they just do exactly the same plot from the first movie over again. But like way worse and with less cameos. Or sorry, with way more celebrity cameos. Like instead of writing like real jokes, they just have like, oh my God, is that Kevin Hart? Snoop Dogg's at the high school party? Minus two, it's a bad idea. If you think it's a bad idea, then it's a plus two. Round one. You don't understand. You're just like the taxi from Taxi Driver. Wait, are you talking about that uh, Jimmy Fallon, Queen Latifah movie? Or is that the one with um, Ansel Elgort and Kevin Spacey? Taxi Driver? Are you insulting me? Are you calling me, are you calling me Jimmy Fallon? They should remake it. Colin Trevorrow should remake Taxi Driver for a Gen Z audience. He could call it Uber Driver. And it would be a horror movie, and the tagline would be, Your driver is on his way. No, your driver is pulling up. By the way, are we all going to see Megan uh, on Friday? My, my Twitter timeline has been inundated with ads for Megan. I, uh, I think I have to see this movie. It's about a, a robot bodyguard for a child. But here's the thing. She goes rogue. I think it has a chance to be either deliberate camp in a good way or possibly so bad it's good. It's, it seems like the highest possible... Candidate, the best candidate, the highest midichlorian count for so bad it's good movie in a long time. <laughs> Hello, it's me again. Talk to the hand because the face doesn't want to hear it anymore. Talk to what hand? Talk to your hand? Their entire marketing for it was a TikTok dance? I know, that's why I got to see it. Hang on, hang on. Oh, dude, this is hole in one -able. A little downhill, but a little backwind. We want none backspin, not quite full power. Nice shot. Should have had a little backspin. What? Oh! What was that? It's the craziest shot I've ever seen. It hit the, it didn't hit the pole, it hit the canvas. The canvas dampened it enough to, to land in the hole. Please, I've never wanted anything more than this. Slash moment? Doesn't exist yet. That's fine. That's fine. That, they're gonna play that on Sports Center every 15 minutes for the rest of my life on planet Earth. Especially the part where I said, we didn't shoot it right. <laughs> well, I didn't realize the wind was blowing in such a way that it would put the flag out like that and then I would hit the, the vinyl flag and then drop and then have a perfect bounce to get, to get the glizzy right in the glizzy hole. Well, we did make the finals. Mods, can you pay out the believers, please? Just play very sensible ball. It's a touch windy. This is sensible ball. I know it may not look so sensible. This is sensible. Take that. <clears throat> then you send it. Nice shot. That one burns a little. We might have been able to even land it on the green, but that's okay. 
craziest wind I've ever seen. Definitely wants some backspin here. What's Bespin? I'm not a Star Wars guy. What's Bespin? I'll take it. I'll take it. Many are saying it's the cleanest round of golf ever played. The beautiful game. The most popular sport in the world. Virtual golf. And maybe the best to ever do it. Ho Horvat. Named after Toronto Maple Leafs third line center. Bo Horvat. What are we, 54 points? It's a new moon record. Fifty-four points. <laughs> is that even possible? The ball is is ninety percent over the edge of the hole. There's been a physics error. That's a non-physical object. It's a gaseous ball. Miyazaki, hello? Hello? Okay. People in 1896 when they heard take me out to the ball game for the first time. I saw that tweet. Yeah, I made that tweet. I saw it too. I saw it when I made it. Did you talk about that tweet yet? What's to talk about? I feel like seven people are about to be eliminated here. I'm one of them. No, just three. And one of them is me. Can you explain that tweet? Okay, well, I saw a tweet the night before that was ambient fans. When the first chord change happens nine minutes into the song. And it, it was that picture with that caption. And then, like 12 hours later, my ass was driving to H Mart in Burnaby. And we were listening to kids' music because we had our kid in the car. And Kermit the Frog singing, take me out to the ball game. And then one thing led to another. And I was thinking about it the whole way home. Made the tweet as soon as I got home. What, 12,000 likes? No big deal. It's a good one today. Okay, I'm, I'll take, listen, I'll take your word for it. No, it's not. <clears throat> oh, actually, it's fine. <laughs> I was going to say no, it's not, but that's not fair. Because I don't know anybody that's in Coraline. But on the other hand, that's okay. Because I do know people that are in The Amazing Spider-Man. Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone are in this movie. So let's start at Coraline. And we'll find someone in this that is in other things. There appear to be a few. Okay. I'm, I'm racking my brain right now. Just give me a second. I mean, I know how we can get out to, to bigger movies, for sure. Dakota Fanning, War of the Worlds, Tom Cruise. Now you got access to Hollywood. Keith David, The Thing, Kurt Russell. Now you got access to Hollywood. But how do we get to Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone, or I don't know anybody else in The Amazing Spider-Man. Okay, Emma Stone was in Crazy Stupid Love with Steve Carell and Julianne Moore. Julianne Moore is in Magnolia with Tom Cruise. Dakota Fanning, War of the Worlds, Tom Cruise, Magnolia, Julianne Moore, Crazy Stupid Love, Emma Stone, The Amazing Spider-Man. Now listen, there's probably a greater distance than you could take, but in terms of just raw speed... That's not too bad. I'm not an efficiency guy. I'm a, um, I'm a... I'm a speed guy. Okay. You're the TAS bot that does spin moves while waiting. So true. What is he talking about? I don't know what that means. So true. This, I've said that about myself. 
many times. TAS bot is a robot from SGDQ. OMFGTAS bot SGDQ raffle barbecue uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. That was too fast. We got one minute left in the stream. Quick, who wrote Piano Man? What are you talking about? I know who sings it. It's Dua Lipa. Hey, I know another song from this year. Actually, I was thinking because I heard it in the grocery store. What's that Dua Lipa song? <laughs> I know it. I know it. If you say the name of the big Dua Lipa song from, for, sorry, from 2022, then I'll know it. Le I'm levitating. I got Saddam, Gadu. I'm levitating. Ooh, some boot. Da -da. I'm levitating. That's from 2021. All right. Well, I still know I'm, it's about damn time. Turn up the, turn off the music. Turn up the lights. I've got a feeling it's going to be an early night. Okay. It's about bedtime. I also know, is that my, my Bezzy in a Tessie? I know that one. I believe that's by Saweetie. So It's not the Muppet Show theme. That's, um... It's time to start the music. It's time to light the lights. It's time to... With the Muppet Show tonight. Okay, let me see if my wife's ready to stream. It's not Shaggy. Shaggy's more like... The seaweed is always greener in somebody else's lake. Ten minutes, huh? Okay. My wife actually hit me with the sorry my league game is going on too long. I don't believe it. You know, I, I knew I bought bad pasta yesterday. When, you know how some pastas are like handmade? They say it on the box, handmade. Some are like rustic style. Old country recipe. The pasta I bought... Yesterday, you know what it said on the box? Slow dried. And then it had like a little, like a, a laurel leaf and then a little circle at the bottom. And in the circle, it said seven. And I said, what does that mean? I looked at the back of the box. It said, we slow dry our noodles for seven hours. Who cares? It, does it matter whether they're dried slow or fast? Is this the sort of thing that I should know like, when, when I go to, like, a nice Italian grocery store, should I say, how long does your, uh, how long do you dry your pasta for? I love that you got censored for a link here. So it says, I've always wanted to see you try star, star, star. This, that's, that's derogatory. Wait, what could possibly be under the stars? <laughs> I don't want to know. Did you see the Environment Canada warning about the snowfall next week? No! Hold on. Weather.ca. Uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Sure, allow ads on the Weather Network. I don't care. Okay, next seven days. Sun, clouds, rain, 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 clouds, rain. Is Vancouver. What do you expect? But I, forget that. Let me see the next 14 days, please. Can I see the 14-day forecast? Few full 14 days. I see no snow in the forecast, you piece. This is the second time I got you. That. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> Why vitamins should be added to your routine this year? How to watch today's quadranted meteor shower from anywhere, bro? I'm sick of these damn media meteor showers. 
Used to be, every single meteor shower is like this. You won't see this meteor shower again until 2237. Yeah, but there's going to be another equally impressive one in like two and a half months. It's just a week. There's a new celestial phenomenon that you can only see once in a lifetime, like every six weeks. I'm over it, man. I'm just I'm going to sleep. Tips and tricks on how to meet people and make friends in Vancouver with COVID. Like you're, I'm assuming that you're saying with the, the environment, we're still living in a COVID um, reality. I'm, if you have COVID... You should stay indoors. I'm not a doctor. This is just my hunch, at least. Or at least maybe meet other people that also have COVID. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any... Well, I have friends, but I never see them. I can't... When was the last time I saw Corey? That shit was probably like 2018. Talk to him now and then, but... It's been a long time, that's for sure. Not since last year. Okay, the joke doesn't even work because it's been like... <laughs> it's been way more than one year. It's true, you don't, I don't see... Uh, you know, As an adult, you don't see a lot of friends that often. Now and then, maybe. Kate's live! Kate's live! Let's go! Forget that tangent. It was going nowhere anyway. See ya! Yes, as I walk through the valley where I harvest my grain, I take a look at my wife and realize she's very plain. That's just perfect for an Amish like me. You know we shun fancy things like electricity. I don't remember all the... I, I don't remember the whole thing. I ain't ever punched a tourist even if he deserved it. An Amish with a tood, you know, that's unheard of. But I keep something and something so long that even Ezekiel thinks that my mind is gone. I'm a man with a plan. I'm into discipline. Got the Bible in my hand and a beard. Apparently, I do remember the whole thing.